Now we're going to discuss power functions um, with rational exponents. Please remember rational is just another way of saying fraction. So a couple of things for us to remember. We have our exponential form and notice that the numerator, that is always your exponent and your denominator is always the root. And I always um, try to remember that the bottom is where roots always grow. So this is gonna be the root. Um, if you rewrite this over to radical form, then you're gonna have the nth root of x, and then that's gonna be raised to the m power. Now, something for us to remember is when n is even, that the domain will be restricted to just positive values. Okay, so for number one, we have x to the one-fourth power, and that is going to mimic um, the y equals x to the one-half power, which is our square root function, square root of x. So this will also look like the fourth root of x, now, something for us to keep in mind with this, um, here with, with this, just like our x squared, we're really not gonna have any symmetry, um, but we can pick out some points and plug in. So, a good point to um, plug in first, I would plug in, well, zero. And the fourth root of zero is still zero, so I know I'm sitting on the origin. You can also plug in one, and the fourth root of one is one. So over one, up one. And so kind of there's a good idea of what we could find. Um, let's see, we could plug in a couple of other numbers if you want, but you need to remember, again, it's gonna look like the square root function. And so really we've got something that's gonna look like this. Okay, now talking about your domain and range, the domain on this one is not going to be all real numbers. The domain is going to be from 0 to positive infinity, and the range is going to be that as well. You have from 0 to positive infinity. Your x and y intercepts are going to both be 0, 0. Your increasing interval is from 0 to infinity. There's no decreasing, and this isn't symmetric. So your symmetry, there is none. And as far as discontinuities, there's none. And then when you're talking about your end behavior, as x approaches infinity, f of x is also approaching infinity. It's moving slowly, but it is. And then the other direction is not gonna be negative infinity, it's gonna be x is approaching zero. Well, then f of x is also approaching zero. Okay, so for this one, um, with it being to the one-fifth, it would be good to compare this um, to the function x to the one-third, and that being the cube root. And remember, the cube root function really looked like the cube function on its side. It did something like this. And so we know that this function that we're given is going to do the same thing. So um, something else for us to note here, this is odd, and this should be symmetric about the origin. Because I can take odd roots of negatives and still have points, but I can't do even roots. And so for the odd, most of the time, it will be symmetric about the origin. We can pick some points and substitute in if you want. Um, I would pick zero, of course, that's gonna give you zero. If you pick one, that's gonna give you a half. And keep in mind, if this is symmetric about the origin, and go and write one up a half, you can also go back one and down a half. And so we're getting toward this shape here. And so we can go ahead and plot some more points if you want, or you can take a pretty good educated guess on what it's going to look like. And then let's go through our characteristics. Our domain for this should be all real numbers. Our range will also be all real numbers. 
our x and y intercepts would be 0, 0. Increasing function is going to be over all the x values. There's no decreasing. There's no discontinuities. And you're in behavior as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is also approaching positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is also approaching negative infinity. Okay, for our next problem, um, let's go ahead and rewrite it and see if we can figure out what this might be doing. Um, keep in mind this exponent only goes with the x. So we're going to have negative 3, and we're going to have the square root of x to the fifth. Now notice this is an even root, so we are going to have a restricted domain. Um, so remember your square root function looks something like this. Um, this negative here, that's going to flip this over. And notice that 5 there, that, that x to the 5th, that's really going to be forcing this to go downward. So what we're going to do here, let's plot some points just to be sure though. Um, let's pick out, of course, 0. If I plug in 0, then I'm going to have the square root of 0. And so that's 0. And so I know for sure we've got some zero, zero going on. Uh, let's pick one. F at one, then that's gonna be negative three times the square root of one to the fifth. Well, that's still just negative three. So we're gonna go over one and down three. So notice that is forcing this to move downward. Um, we can take the square root of Four. So let's try and see if we can do f at 4, but I think this is really going to get too big. So I have negative 3, the square root of 4 is 2, but then 2 to the 5th, that's 32. That's going to be way too large. However, we do see what's happening is this is tending really down toward negative infinity. So we can go ahead and do a good sketch of our graph. Um, so we should have something that looks like that. Now let's talk about our domain. The domain for this, again, since we are um, on that right side with the even, then we know that the domain is gonna have to stay bigger than zero. It is included with zero. The range is gonna be from negative infinity up to zero. Our x-intercept was at zero, zero. The y was at zero, zero. We don't have any increasing, decreasing from zero to infinity. We don't have any symmetry here because of that even root. And we don't have any discontinuities. And now for our in behavior, um, keep in mind as X is approaching positive infinity. So as we're tending this way, F of X is tending downward. So F of X is approaching negative infinity. And then as we're going the other direction, x is only going to be going toward zero and stopping. And then notice f of x is also stopping there at zero. Okay, for our next problem, notice that we have the cube root of x squared. And let's think about what's going on with this problem here. Now, of course, the cube root portion, uh, let's see, cube root looked something like this. And then keep in mind too, whenever we plug in um, that negative there, that's gonna reflect this over the x-axis. So now we have this going on. And that's gonna be for this reflection here. But look at the end result of this. If I plug in an x value, I square it and did the cube root, that's positive, but I'm going to make that negative again. So it's going to take this portion that's above the x-axis here, and it's going to flip it over. And so we're going to have something that looks like that. So um, we could plug in some points just to see if we want to. Um, I would start with 0, 0, of course. That would always be a good one. Um, if I plug in 0, I get 0. Um, if we plug in positive 1, we get 
here positive 1, but then that negative on the outside is going to make it negative 1. And if I plug in negative 1 and square it, I'm going to get the same value. And so we could go ahead and even plug in a couple more numbers if you want to. But it looks like from our investigation earlier that we're going to have something that looks more like this. Okay, and now talking about our domain, that domain here is going to be all real numbers. Our range or the y values that's staying below the x axis, I need to flip that around. That's going to be from negative infinity to zero. Our x and y intercepts, they're both at zero, zero. Increasing from negative infinity up to zero. And then we are decreasing from zero to infinity. And this one we do have symmetry. Notice this is symmetrical about the y-axis. We don't have any discontinuities. And now our end behavior should be back to normal. So uh, our end behavior, we're going to say as x approaches positive infinity f of x is approaching negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching negative infinity. Okay, this function looks like it's going to be kind of a mixture of our square root function and our cubic function. And so let's keep in mind what those are going to look like. So our square root function looks like this. And that cubic, and it's been reflected, is going to look something like that. So we're going to have a mixture going on here. And, of course, this portion here will be flipped around. And so let's see. If we plug in 0, if we let x be 0, then we're going to have the square root of 27. And the square root of 27, that's going to be 3 root 3. So if x is 0, then y is going to go up here, 1, 2, 3, and just a little bit past it. Okay, and let's see. If x is 3, well, 3 cubed is 27, so 27 minus 27 is 0. So I know I've got this 3 here. And so it looks like we're probably going to have something that looks like this. All right, um, let's go look at uh, our domain and range. The domain for this is going to be from negative infinity up to 3 included. Our range is going to be from 0 to infinity. Our x-intercept is at 3, and our y-intercept was at 3 root 3. Our increasing interval is none. Our decreasing is from negative infinity to 3. We do not have any symmetry here. Our discontinuities here, we have none. And then our end behavior. The end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, as we're going to the left, f of x is approaching positive infinity. And if we're going the other, other way, instead of approaching positive infinity, x is going to be approaching 3 because it's stopping there. And that's going to say f of x is approaching 0.